Hello gamers, thank you so much for joining us. I have Pyra here, a fantastic and amazing part of the Final Fantasy XIV online community. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, did you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you're doing? Yeah, so thank you for having me, first of all. Uh, I am Pyra. I stream Final Fantasy XIV about six times per week, if not more, if I can sneak away with it. Um, uh, as long, uh, along with fourteen, I'm also an artist and a mentor for creative professionals, and I volunteer my time to a lot of great causes in the meantime. Um, I've been playing 14 since 2015, early 2015, just past my nine year mark. And right now I'm kind of developing more content as I go as someone who's played the game for a long time. And that's just a little bit about me. Wow. Well, thank you so much. It's good to meet another like OG Final Fantasy 14 player. Um, <laughs> I, I haven't done anything savage or ultimate though. So I've just been super casual. I, I started out super casual. And then as soon as I dipped my toes into savage, it was just like, Ooh, I, I can't stop. And right now I have a casual static and it's a bunch of my FC mates and very close friends. Um, and we do now ultimates, but it, it's at like a very, a very slow pace. We know that we're going to have a lot of memes and a lot of mistakes. So we just like to, to challenge ourselves and have some fun. See, that's perfect. That's what I would go in for. Just, just having it with your friends and, and like not having that, that pressure and that, you know, okay. Um, so we're going to dive right into it. This is a podcast where we talk about how video games have positively impacted your life. Um, so the first question I have here is, can you tell us about your earliest memories of playing video games? Yeah, so I was playing video games like as soon as I hit like four years old, five years old. Um, my I have four older sisters and my parents got them the original Nintendo as soon as it came out. So I remember stealing as much time as I could away to play, you know, Super Mario Brothers, to play Duck Hunt, to play Legend of Zelda. Uh, from there, I ended up getting like a Sega Genesis. And so I was always playing Mortal Kombat, even in like middle school and high school, I would invite all my friends over to have like Mortal Kombat 2 tournaments. Um, and it was just always a like feeling of just community and bonding. Um, always like would go to friends houses and like play on the Xbox when that came out and and just I've always kind of had video games in my life. <laughs> wow, that is fantastic. So if you had to, to name one, what is your all time favorite game and why? Well, you can't see all of my plushies and paintings over here, <laughs> but uh, Final Fantasy 14 has consumed the majority of my life. Um, so that is definitely my favorite game. I have met dozens and dozens of some of my best friends, closest friends, friends that I've had at my wedding, friends that I've lived with. Um, I've met over a dozen of them in real life. And it's just, there's something about not just the creative storytelling and the visuals that I'm in love with, but also just the sense of community. And I've found such a feeling of like family and home from this game. So I will be playing this game as till the end of the servers if that ever happens so definitely my favorite game <laughs> wow i hope you're in for a commitment because if final fantasy 11 is any indication of how long 14 could go um wow i'm i'm ready for it my husband and i <laughs> my husband's actually playing dsr right now he's in uh dragon song <laughs> oh, awesome. ultimate so we're both obsessed with it we're we're both in it for the long run so it kind of helps too that it's like well this fits into my normal everyday life <laughs> There you go. I mean, there's always something you can do in it. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. How have video games impacted your social life and relationships? So it, as far as relationships, I've definitely forged a lot of new relationships from the game. Socially, I, I kind of have always been someone that is a homebody, like especially in the past 10 years, I've kind of like resorted to more of that home life, never been a partier, never been like going to the bar or anything like yeah. that. So I always knew that like, I wanted to have kind of people in my life that reflected that same type of lifestyle. And I've been able to find a good core group of friends. I mean, I've had friends come and go from the game, but luckily um, having a community online has kind of like kept my social life probably at the most active that it's ever been. <laughs> Wow. No, that's fantastic. And and you're right that it's more than just the game that connects these people once you form a community. Like there's the Discord part of it and the streaming part of it. And 
Absolutely. And Discord, I, I remember getting Discord maybe like a, a year or two after it was launched. And at first I was like, I don't know if this platform is going to work because we used to use like Skype and TeamSpeak back right. in like yeah. 2015, 2016, mm -hmm. 17. And uh, even just like the implementation of just kind of Discord in conjunction with playing the games, like really was a game changer because it's like, you're at work and you're messaging your friends from the game. You know, you're you're on your, you know, on your vacation and you're still messaging your friends. And it's just kind of like this community network that you didn't think you would have. And it's kind of, you know, brought a lot of a lot of light to my life for sure. Awesome. Uh, what's your favorite gaming platform and why? I used to be a console girl up until like right before I started playing 14, when I was starting to play uh, Warframe. Warframe was actually one of the first games I got like heavy into before this. And my husband, then boyfriend at the time was like, you should try to get a PC. And I was like, you can play video games on a computer <laughs> like that. I only played flash games when I was a kid on a computer. So um, definitely fell in love with the PC, just the customizable aspect of it. Um, you know, all, everything from the pretty RGB lights to like, hey, this part isn't working. Let's let's change a part out. So I, I've loved having the PC. Do you keyboard and mouse on a PC or do you controller? I keyboard and mouse. I am okay. very, I don't want to say I'm anti-controller. I feel like controllers are good for certain things, but I just, it, it's also the customizable part with the keyboard and mouse that I really love. Um, but I've just found that that's the most comfortable for me too. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. It's just I, as a console player, like I started uh, Final Fantasy 14 on the PS3 um, and, and kind of moved through it. And it's been very, very difficult to learn to go keyboard and mouse from being an OG controller player. But I guess if you started the game as keyboard and mouse, then you don't have that same problem. Yeah, and this, so Final Fantasy XIV was actually my first MMO too, so I didn't really have, like, all any of the games I was playing on, like, Xbox, for instance, I never had PlayStation, um, they were more of, like, the Halo, the Halo Reach, right. the Call of Duty, um, Le uh, Left 4 Dead, so I didn't really, like, the controls just feel super unique to me versus, like, other games that I've played, so... For me, it was kind of easy getting into it. And then once I got like a 12 button MMO mouse, I'm like, oh, well, now I can't go back to a regular <laughs> mouse. It's just that's not even possible. <laughs> Fair enough. OK, how do you balance your time between playing video games and other responsibilities and activities? I don't. <laughs> so it, I, I do a lot of things outside of my full time job. I volunteer for a lot of uh, great organizations. I think one thing that helps is because my husband also plays 14 religiously like myself. So it's kind of like a, a common bond thing that we can do together, sometimes separate. Um, yeah. And then I've kind of, I, I stepped away from the game for a little bit to handle some uh, real life emergencies with my family. And then when I came back in, I just realized that a lot of being playing video games was really a, an escape for me and kind of like a way for me to have fun and to relax and to kind of like go to that space. So um, I've looked at it as kind of self-care in a weird way where it's like I'm doing something that I love to do. And therefore, it's not like, a, you know, just adding an extra thing on. It's something that's like bringing me joy. Um, so I've kind of pushed it into my life like that and thought of it like that. Wow. Okay, because I know like with with streaming and with especially YouTube creation, like that takes a lot of time on top of an already busy schedule. Do you find that the game conflicts with it or that you just are able to work with the platforms naturally with your current schedule? Um, I, I'd say it's kind of naturally. There definitely can be some challenges, um, especially when you know, you have like a really busy week at work or, you know, when you're trying to get a lot of YouTube content edited and you see your friends playing things and like, hey, come join. And you're like, oh, I'm working on this edit right now. But I, I try my best to kind of do it seamlessly. And a lot of my content is stuff that I stream live. So then that way I'm kind of like almost killing two birds with one stone. Right. I'm taking care of two things at the same time, which I think has been very helpful for my content creation. Awesome. Um. Can you share a favorite video game memory or experience that has had a lasting impact on you? Absolutely. So I feel like the first time it was back in Alexander, the Alexander days in Final Fantasy, A1S, the first Savage that I ever cleared 
was probably like the biggest moment in my like the first biggest moment I had gaming I had never really done anything super challenging like I've played a lot of games but I've also not finished a lot of games because I was just like oh let's move on to the next thing and um that was the first time clearing A1S was probably the first time that I felt like I accomplished something so huge and my group of friends are are static at the time we didn't even know that it was called a static we we're just like let's all <laughs> do this fight together we would all we we're all in our early 20s we would be on for like 10 hours just because it was fun just in voice communication just going at it having fun and so like that was like one of the first like big core memories I have was just clearing that and just feeling so triumphant and wanting to go take a shower and sleep like right afterward. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you think that that adrenaline and that dopamine is kind of like getting a tattoo? Do you think there's an addictive property to clearing things like that? Absolutely. And I, I don't, I'm not a stranger <laughs> to the tattoo game either. I got a few myself, but um, 100%. I mean, there are some days you go to raid, like even now I've been doing it for such a long time. There are some days you go in and you're like, okay, let's get these two hours done. Like I'm not feeling it today. But then like the moment you hit like a good prog point or the moment that you like clear, it is such a high, such an adrenaline. It's like, I want to tell everyone, I want to scream from the rooftops. Like I just cleared this fight. It's gone and out of my life forever. <laughs> oh, <that's amazing. laughs> awesome. Did you get, did you manage to get a memento from that fight? Like, do you have a, a weapon or, or something that you still have or? Oh yes. I, every piece of gear that I've gotten from savages, no matter what it is i've kept like i've had to get extra retainers between that and just certain certain fights from back in like a realm reborn in heaven's word even if the gear is not valid anymore i'm like you know how hard it took me to get that gear i will <laughs> never get rid of it even if it's ugly and i won't wear it again like i have to hoard it <laughs> hey I, I can understand i can understand <laughs> Okay. do you think video games can be used as an effective tool for education or personal development Absolutely. I've actually worked with some companies in the past um, at my full time job that build museum uh, museum video game interactives. Um, I think it's a helpful tool. Um, they always say the learning. There's like the VARC method for learning visual audio. Um, reading and kinesthetic. I feel like the visual kinesthetic is like where I live is for as an artist and as you know, a gamer and somebody who likes to just touch feel and like it swarmed into something and so i think that video games can absolutely be used for um getting people kind of invested like it's kind of like um to me it's kind of like even thinking of like story in games you're you're not just reading something or listening to something but you're you're having to take part in you know moving the story along you have to walk somewhere um and i think it really helps kind of like form that bond and those kind of like connections so i i, I definitely think it's something that i would love to see in education right um because i mean how how effective is learning if you don't feel like you're learning right like you're so engaged in the process that you just want to get to the next step yeah. exactly and it's something that i think can be used for kind of like long lasting learning too instead of just reading some pages and you know, putting the In book down. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Can you name a game that has impacted or influenced you the most in life? So for this one, it's kind of a toss up between 14, of course, just because I feel like that's definitely changed my life a lot now as I know it, just because of the connections and relationships I've made. But even before that, I will say Warframe. Warframe was the first game that I played online. So kind of with other people, like I, I'd kind of done a little bit of Call of Duty online before, but nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, but Warframe was the first game that I actually decided to invest time into it, like play for more than like an hour at a time and just kind of like forge, uh, forge relationships, form, forge connections with people. So that was probably my first dip into like online gaming. Um, and it definitely like kind of, did a domino effect bleeding into Final Fantasy. <laughs> right. So are those the only two MMOs you played or have you played others? Or? Um, I tried Guild Wars 2 for a little bit. Um, I didn't really get much into the story. I was just like, 
my friends were like, you need to come here for PVPing. So that's kind of, I just right. went straight into PVP for that game. So I did do a little bit of that, but really um, between Warframe and uh, Final Fantasy 14, those are like my first, you know, my first times into the MMO world. Wow. You kind of have the bars set high now, I think, that you couldn't just wander around and play others and be satisfied. No, exactly. And for me, it's it's kind of one of those things, even with Final Fantasy now that we're like in kind of a, I don't want to say a content drought, but, you know, we're we're leading up to the new expansion. Mm -hmm. And so some content's coming out a little slower than others. I still always find things to do, like even if it's just standing around with somebody while you're in voice chat like there are always things that I can do there are always a million side quests I haven't even touched so I haven't really felt burnt out like maybe like oh I don't want to play for half of today but I haven't felt like the true burnout like I've seen a lot of people have right no and I mean I haven't either but I mean I'm going through my achievements and looking at things I haven't done yet and crossing things off the list and getting that kind of satisfaction out of this kind of empty space uh, yeah. Where I can go and get all my triple triad cards and finish Eureka and, and do that sort of things. Yeah, exactly. And I, I love kind of pushing some of those things off myself. I don't know if you find the same. I love pushing, you know, like triple triad, for instance. I'm like, I know I'm terrible at that. So I'm going to push that off. And then if I'm really feeling like, I don't know what I want to do today. Sometimes I just pick something like that up. Like, oh, yeah, let's just try to do a bunch of those. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, have you taken any long breaks from the game? Um, the longest, not fully, but the longest was in 2017. Um, I just had a lot of family issues at that time. So I would log in to keep my house available. Right. Um, but I was really only kind of logging in like once a month at that point. And that lasted mm -hmm. maybe like six months to not even a year, but maybe about six months. And that was really the only time. Right. Okay. Because I mean, I, I think for long-term players, that's probably the key to our success or our longevity, let's say, is, is being able to take those breaks and and come back to the game. Because I know I've breaked to play a couple of new games as they've released. Um, do you think maybe this this culture now of, of devouring content very quickly, new content as it comes out, uh, is why some people are experiencing these burnouts? Like... I definitely think so. Um, I've had plenty of uh, friends that I used to play with in Heaven's Word days that they were like world first or server first people in like the savage tiers. So they would kind of get right through story content, like blow right through, you know, anything. And then they would just have nothing. So then they would say, OK, well, I'm not going to log in for months and months ended up turning into years, turning into, well, I'm not coming back. So I, I definitely see a lot of people that kind of like zoom through content and then kind of get, I don't want to say turned off, but do definitely step away from the game for a long hiatus. Um, myself, I think that what's helped as well is my professional career outside of gaming. Mm -hmm. I've definitely done a lot of steps in those uh, terms. I went and I got my master's degree. I coach creative entrepreneurs and like, I'm always doing something like multiple times a week. So I might not have as much time to play the game as I would like to, but then when I get on, I'm like excited to get into it. And I think that's kind of helped me kind of like balance of not just priorities, but like hobbies and things that I like to do have kind of like helped me stay consistent in the game. Right. No, very good point. Uh, do you think video games should be used to address social or political issues? So this one, as an artist, I feel like is a little tough, right? Because a lot of art pieces, I'll say. Um, hmm. So this is, a, this is a good question. This one I do relate back to, like, the arts. A lot of artists will do s pieces that are social or politically toned. And I think it kind of depends on what, what's the message, right? Like, who, who is your audience? If your audience, if you're trying to use your video game platform as a creative medium, and if that you want to address these social or political issues, I think it makes sense. Um, it's just kind of like making a painting. If you make a painting with a very um, social tone, very political tone, and that's what you want it to represent, then absolutely, I think you can go for it. Um, however, with video games, depending on what kind of game is made and like what your message is, you have to realize, I think that having these issues addressed is going to 
outline a lot of your your game experience you're choosing your audience at a certain point and you're choosing a message to your audience and as long as you can stand by that and know that that's something that you want to be seen as or represented as i think it's something that could be could be used okay no that's a, a very thoughtful answer um i i might just leave it at that <laughs> i might Your just place. leave it at that uh, no, because it is a, a very emotionally charged uh, topic these days. So I know it, and, and it's it's very tough too because it, it you, everyone has an opinion, right? And I feel like no matter what you do in a game, you're going to say something, and somebody's not going to like it, and that's just how it is. Um, it's just you know everyone's views are different in one way or another and so i feel like if you're going to implement it that's fine you just have to make sure that you're ready to ready to announce like this is who i am this is what our brand is and, and draw the line there and yeah awesome mm -hmm. if you're sitting down to listen to a game soundtrack which one is it my spotify is filled with anything from Sokin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I listen to a lot of the Final Fantasy 14 and the Final Fantasy 16 soundtracks. Mm. Um, anything from the primals. I, I do love listening to like video game music in general. So those are always on play. The other one too would be uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World uh, by Anamanaguchi, Anamana I believe. Um, when I'm feeling like very chip -toony, that's that's my okay. go-to. Okay. Uh, did you get an opportunity to play 16? I did not because I don't own a PlayStation. <laughs> so sadly, uh, one of my yeah. friends, when our schedules align, I will watch him play through. But I am one of the sad folks waiting for the PC release to come out. <laughs> no, that's that's fair. And it definitely illustrates a point that uh, I think the hype for 16 wasn't what it could have been because a lot of the community was like, oh, we don't really want to talk too much about it until mm -hmm. everyone has had a chance to play. And uh, so we're kind of yeah. just like, you know, chomping at the bit to start talking about it and hyping about it. But it's, mm -hmm. you know. It's very much appreciated, though, for like, for just PC people. Like, I I've, I've watched certain parts of the game, but I've tried not to spoil, like, the entire story because I do want to go through it, like, with a fresh mind the whole time without knowing, like, the ending or anything like that. So... I'm glad that I haven't been spoiled of it yet. <laughs> right. And that's impressive given the age of the game at this point and the fact that there's been DLC content already and that sort of thing. So I know it. Yeah, I've I've kind of cherry picked uh different like playthroughs that I'll watch. Like I know some parts of the story. Um, but pretty much if I see a spoiler, I just kind of run away. Like close down all the tabs. <laughs> nope. No, we're done. <laughs> awesome. What game mechanic would you like to see more of in games of the future? Oh, this one's a tough one. Okay. Um, so for me, I would like to see more and like what I like seeing is kind of like skill trees or like customizable abilities, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, I work with a lot of people with uh, physical disabilities or, you know, maybe like mental disabilities. And I do love the games like I, I always think of like Borderlands I think of uh Guild Wars 2 even Final Fantasy if you consider like spell speed versus crit or just kind of like how how you build out your your character so that your play experience is altered to kind of like your taste I do really love those for both the accessibility portion of it as well as just you know kind of customizable um skills so that you can it feels right to everyone Awesome. So what do you think? I, I This might be a really weird question out of left field. Uh, after level 100 with 7.0, do you think Final Fantasy 14 should move into like an alternate advancement system? Or do you think we should continue to, to level up above 100? Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think I would be interested in either. It would be kind of nice to see what a kind of like different system would be, like different skill system would be. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think I would have to definitely try it firsthand. Um, yeah. Okay, no, that's fair. Yeah. 
Um, because we kind of got introduced to something like that in in Boja uh, with the the different buffs mm. you can get that kind of get, allowed you to choose whether you wanted to focus on defense or focus on healing or focus on DPS. Um, Honestly, now that you say that, I, I think that that would be a good direction to go in because at this point, like I'm a black mage main. My hotbar is pretty much full minus like three spots. My hotbars are full, all three hotbars. So I, I don't know that the solution is like add more or, you know, like just replace, you know, fire four for something else or you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel mm -hmm. like it would be really cool to add a different kind of system so that your rotation is pretty much the same. We're not adding extra hot bar bloat, but, you know, maybe there are some other customizable buffs or, or, you know, skills that you can use. Which upcoming gaming technology are you most excited about? So I, I got the Oculus Quest back in 2020, I believe, and I only have the Quest 1, but stepping into a VR headset for the first time was, like, mind-blowing. I think even before I tried, like, gaming in there, I tried, like, going into, like, National Geographic and seeing, like, Notre Dame for the first time, like, and feeling like you're actually immersed in the world. And it literally made me cry. I was like, holy crap, because I've I've never traveled over there. It just felt so immersive. And so I've definitely tried keeping up a little bit with, like, the VR side of things and, like, the AR side. Um, I'm most excited for that, though, because I feel like the closer we get to like more integrative technologies and more kind of like immersive technologies, it's going to feel more real. And I feel like a lot of us that play video games, especially the MMOs, especially things with, with story or like custom characters that are, that feel like you, you're going to want to feel more immersed. And so I'm, I'm hoping that that kind of has some sort of integration with like some of the games that we know and play today. Wow. Uh, I've, I haven't tried, I haven't tried VR myself. But is there is there an upper limit to immersion, like a point in which maybe battles may become too scary or monsters may become too scary? <laughs> like probably, <laughs> um, <laughs> I definitely want to play any like zombie or jump scare games mm. in there because you know you might actually fall and hurt yourself. <laughs> um, I, I definitely think there is a ceiling. What it is, I'm not sure. The only downside that I've at least seen with like certain things with, like monsters or fighting is like certain games, the motion sickness is just insane. Mm -hmm. Like there was this one game where you're kind of like you have a sword and shield and you run around anything where I'm having to run around and fight at the same time. My equilibrium's just off and then I'm like nauseous for like the rest of the day. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but with that, I I'm just hoping that like maybe if it gets developed in a certain way, like maybe with augmented reality, we can see a world where like you can kind of put that into some of your games. Yeah, for sure. And it was the same thing originally with like motion control and stuff back mm. with the, the big, the early Wii and the DS and stuff. So, yeah, I remember the first time I saw that was uh, like the Xbox Connect. And so even mm. playing like, um, I think me and my friends in high school were playing like Just Dance. And just the fact that you could like do dance and, and it, it tracked <laughs> your motions. Like that was mind blowing for me. I was like, what is this? How is this possible? So I, I feel like there might be a really cool way to experience games and like that that physical kind of atmosphere. Have you kept any old games or consoles for nostalgia? Yes. My <laughs> whole entertainment center in our living room are just filled. I have like two Sega Genesis uh, consoles. I have like a yeah. Nintendo 64. I have my husband's PlayStation 1. We have like some of those silly just plug and play games like the paintball. You just plug it in with the <laughs> adapters. Um everything that we grew up with we own and right now it just kind of sits there as collection but we're hopefully going to be able to get kind of the converters to go to the upgraded tvs wow okay um what game do you wish you could experience again for the very first time i definitely will lean back on final fantasy 14 for this mm -hmm. one I remember when I played, I had zero expectation of what this game would be. Uh, and I remember just walking around mindlessly and like Kuertha is like we were saying before, <laughs> doing the fake grinding. Right. Yeah, yeah. And just experiencing that world for the first time. 
just felt so memorable. Even now, if I go back to like New Gradania or some of the the older zones and you stop and listen to the music, it like gives me chills. It just reminds me of like this very nostalgic time where, you know, back then too, I also didn't have a full-time job. I just worked part-time. So I'd be online for 10 to 16 hours, like on right. the weekends and during the day. And you just had this feeling of like, newness and you know there's there's nothing to work towards besides everything and you know you're just this little fawn going through the woods so <laughs> i wish i could get that experience for the first time for sure yeah no and that is so true like i have a bunch of screenshots from being like level 30 something and posing by like dry bone on my on my unicorn um and and just taking all these really impressive screenshots because i thought this was the goat being level 30 and having a unicorn and and being being there doing those <laughs> things and it, it seems so so sproutish nowadays yes. <laughs> I'll give you one better too. My first screenshots were um, we got like we had the in-game wedding and before then was like some in Mordona. I didn't know how to hide the HUD. So the HUD is all there and I still have these <laughs> screenshots and it looks very just like, oh, you poor little sprout. And I'm like, <laughs> those are still like precious to me. I will never delete them because I'm like, that just reminds me of such a pure time where to me it was the best thing in the world. And then once you, once they finally implemented G pose and once you mm -hmm. are smart enough to shut your HUD off before you take a screenshot, it's like, Oh yeah. <laughs> are there any game companies you think are doing great work for the community? So the company that I think I see the most go do good consistently is, um, Oh God, now I've blanked out on where they are. Who are they? <laughs> Sorry. Rerun. No worries. No worries. Uh, the company that I see do probably the best with their community is Digital Extremes uh, with Warframe. I've just consistently, like, I don't think they do a lot of like grandest um, events or things like that, but I, I started playing the game back in like 2014. And I remember one of the key moments I had with Digital Extremes was they gave away a bunch of free passes to meet them in Boston at PAX East. Yeah. And I got to go and I got to, you know, I messaged them. I was like, I only got one pass. Can my, you know, boyfriend go? And they let me in. And just, it felt so good. I was keeping up with them on Twitter, long story short, and going there and meeting some of the dev team, meeting like Sheldon and Rebecca, they recognized me just from Twitter, like just from my, oh, like wow. my pictures on Twitter and just ha like picking up conversations in real life that, you know, we had in online and then like going to the after party and hanging out with them. And just, I've consistently see them adapting the game to be what the community wants and like getting the community feedback being very active like the community managers are so so active in the community and i think you know they might not do these big you know tens of thousands of dollars presentations like some mm -hmm. companies do but they're they're very their core values i think are very community forward and community focused and i've always loved that about them that's fantastic mm -hmm. What changes do you hope to see in the gaming industry in the next five years? So this one I did chew on a little bit, but I'm, I think what I, it's more of like what I don't want to see is kind of where my brain went. Mm -hmm. um, this past week, we did see a lot of companies do layoffs. Um, a lot of tech industry and game industry companies do some layoffs. And I've heard a lot about, um, Sorry, I blanked out. Um, I've heard a lot about like AI taking over certain jobs and and everything like that. And so I I hope that a lot of the creative process for gaming stays with the loyal staff and the loyal you know producers and developers that have put so much time and energy into this game in these mm -hmm. games. Um, I feel like a lot of developers are underappreciated where they will put their heart, blood, sweat, and tears into games, and then they'll just get laid off. So I really hope that uh, the gaming industry kind of focuses on, you know, if you make your team happy, they will make your fans happy. And that's where the profit will come from, not from budget cuts. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So do you think there is a place for AI technology in gaming, or do you think that we really need to hard pass on all of that? 
I think there's a place for it. Um, but I don't think that it's a proper substitute for creativity. I use AI very casually in my life currently for, you know, helping me through a prompt. Like if I can't think of how to structure a prompt, I might use it to kind of like help me brainstorm and then I'll make my own writing or my own words. Um, I think that AI is going to be fantastic for helping us find cures to diseases and helping us find, you know, ways of accessibility. But I don't, I would never want it to replace creativity. I know for me, if I see an email that someone wrote using AI, you can tell in an instant. I just, right. I, I love AI's future, but I just, I hope that it stays away from the human connection and the human creativity. Right. Uh, so as, as a YouTuber, this is kind of a little outside the realm of gaming, but what do you feel about, about uh, AI made video content? Like on TikTok, on YouTube, a lot of these uh, channels are now just producing AI content. Uh, uh, do you, do you consume that content or do you try to stay away from it? I definitely try to stay away from it. There have been some that have fooled me for a moment, a glimpse in a moment. And then once you start listening to it, I'm like, it, it, it's just such a turnoff for me as such a creative person. Like I surround myself with people who are artists or creatives and just, I don't, there's something very rigid and robotic about those AI videos. It's not for me. I know some people enjoy it and mm -hmm. to each their own. But for myself, I just try to stay away from it as much as I can. And how about as a member of the art community? Like how has how has AI uh, imagery impacted your your career as an artist? Um, my career as an artist, I don't I haven't used it. Um, mm -hmm. I've used it, like I said, maybe for prompts for like breaking out an idea, you know, kind of getting some background content for myself to just reference reference material. Um, I don't like a lot of the AI art where it's just blatantly ripping off artists in the community. I think there's a way to integrate it into the arts. I've actually seen one of the galleries that I partake in in my area. They, they did an AI art exhibition. So they had people make paintings out of just AI imagery. And there were certain criteria where they had them change things like it couldn't just be one image that they asked to make like it had to be like elements that they both handcrafted as well as like AI modified I'm still not sure 100% how I feel about it but that to me at least feels like you're using the tools at your disposal I mean we have cell phones now we don't need film photography you know technology is going to continue to advance and I don't think we should necessarily shy away from everything because they're tools for us to use. I just don't think it should be used as a replacement, you know, an additive. Sure. Maybe I can understand that as long as it's not ripping off anybody's uh, work blatantly, but definitely not a replacement. Absolutely. So yeah, humanity first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are there any upcoming game releases you're particularly excited about? Uh, there are two that are on my radar. Three if you count the Final Fantasy 16 to PC. <laughs> I'm still hoping for that. But um, Final Fantasy 14's new um, expansion, Dawn Trail, if we count that mm -hmm. a release. I'm very excited to kind of do a Realm Reborn 2.0 or 3. Point, whatever you want to consider it. <laughs> um, very excited to kind of like start off in a fresh story, a fresh game. Um, and there's actually a very small indie game uh, called uh, Unleaving that I did a review of earlier this year. I saw them at PAX East last year in Boston, and it's going to be a puzzle platformer that the entire world is painted, like hand painted, oh, wow. acrylic on paper, the between the characters, the backgrounds, the effects. And as an artist, I'm just, I geek out over that game so much. I talk to the developers all the time because I'm just so looking forward to seeing something in that art style. I don't think it's really been done before in that way. So I'm very excited to see that later this year. Wow. That that would be stunning. Yeah, it's, it's I love seeing the behind the scenes. Um, they do some painting on glass to like make certain like swirly effects. And um, it's just, I love plat puzzle games too. So I'm just, it's it's kind of hitting that little sweet spot. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, so this Tuesday, we are getting the the final part of the MSQ for, uh, for Endwalker before Dawn Trail comes out. 
um how 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 big is the hype like the hype's pretty big i because th- this is like this is our last little little chunk before we get into that you know ramp up to dawn trail mm. so i'm pretty excited i'm pretty hyped um i'm gonna try to not rush through the content because sometimes on a patch day i'm like i just want it all like right now just just <laughs> right. quickly get through everything so i'm gonna try not to do that too too fast um but i'm i'm very excited to this feels like kind of that last hurrah before we start really getting into the the pre-dawn trail Absolutely. And here's the controversial question. Uh, if the final step of Manderville's is scripts, would you be, or tomes rather, would you be upset or would you be okay with that? I'm okay with it personally. The The one thing that's really nice about tomes, and I know some people take it, you know, have a different opinion on it. The one thing that I think is nice about tomes though, is it does open your options of what kind of content you can do. Um, I remember living through the Heavensward days and having to do fates for those darn crystals. <laughs> right. I wanted to cry sometimes. I was like, I can't do another fate. <laughs> so I think with the tombstones, it at least, you know, you can do you can do hunt trains. You can do just roulettes every day. You can go do dungeons. You can simultaneously level something up at the same time as getting tombstones for the weapon. So I always like kind of an open option like that because it feels like you're not trapped. Oh, yeah, and you can even do maps. Like you can literally even do maps sometimes for for the tomes. So I, I do like the the kind of availability of options so you don't feel like you're just grinding one thing. Okay. Um, what do you think the odds are? Do you think it's going to be tomes this time? I wouldn't doubt it. I feel like if they've done it this far for the past three stages, I think it's three stages. Yeah. Um, I think we'll we'll see it again. Um, oh well, I guess we'll see it in just a few days. Just a, just a couple of days longer, yeah. If you could magically create your own game, what would it be about? I feel like it would be this weird mix between like that uh, indie game that I was mentioning with the the painterly aspect mm-hmm. with kind of like certain, you know, look of Final Fantasy somehow as well. And then like a Stardew Valley. Like if I could like make a game that just kind of felt like me, I would just kind of do something where it was like that that lifestyle content, but like maybe you're kind of like Bob Ross and you're you're doing something relating to painting. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> And I think, like you've mentioned it now in a couple of of, uh, questions, is indie games are really producing a lot of fan favorite content, like Stardew Valley being an example, Mm. uh, with much, much smaller budgets than AAA games. Uh, So is this kind of a signal that that on the whole, maybe gamers are looking more towards the experience as opposed to like the big flashy cinematics and, and voice acting and that sort of thing? Absolutely. I, it was very interesting for me, um, being someone that goes to PAX East every year. PAX is like a gaming convention. Um, I go to the one in Boston cause I live in the Northeast. Um, they used to have just one little indie mega booth. And when 2020 happened and a lot of the big games companies started pulling out, there was a, a big concern of whether those conventions were going to sustain any longer. Um, because the AAA people were like, Nope, peace out. We're gone. We're not doing it. But the the indie game community came out, or the indie um, devs came out, and most of these shows are mostly indie games, and it's more packed than it's ever been before. I'm seeing more people try out indie games, like indie games, and fall in love with them instead of having to follow a AAA developer all the way through uh, with every game they produce. I'm definitely seeing a lot of love go to indie games, and it just makes me so excited, like, as a creative, like, yes, you don't need, you know multi-million dollar budgets just to get any traction (laughs) no and it's fantastic for the the type of story and the type of game we're possibly going to see and that's not just coming from a place of a dragon age fan who's been waiting 10 years for (laughs) next (laughs) game but i mean we're kind of in that state where we have been disappointed by a lot of these larger companies and and so we are looking for better stories and and cleaner games exactly and i i feel like with with technology the way it is with social media the way it is it's a lot easier for some of these smaller companies to 
to get traction, to get notabil notability. You don't have to pay for multi-million dollar advertising, advertising just to get your name out there. You see people get TikTok famous overnight. So I feel like the accessibility for these companies to kind of gain some advertising traction on social media platforms is really going to just go in the favor of indie games. And I'm, I'm for it. I, I don't like the big name tags as long as you're providing me like quality content that's that's what i'm there for awesome okay i think we mentioned this before but how do you think ai will change gaming in the future i think there are definitely will be companies that lean into ai for the wrong reasons kind of like we mentioned before you know taking out writers taking out artists implementing ai as a sole means to produce content um I think that's going to kind of to our last question too. I think that's going to maybe push us towards more indie games. Um, I feel like there might be some big companies that will try to get away with this. And I feel like a lot of the human connection really sees through that. You know, a lot of people want to see handmade work, handmade, you know, really self, uh, they want to see themselves in the games and they want to see like, People put their 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 hard work into it, and there's that connection made when those you know when those games are made by people who are dedicated to the game. And so I feel like AI is really going to shake the gaming industry up. Um, hopefully for the better, though. Hopefully people will kind of see through that and utilize it as a tool that can you know maybe help us write code faster or do some of mm -hmm. the you know the tasks that are just kind of repetitive. You know, get those out of the way faster. No, and I think that's a beautiful point. Like AI can be a tool to do things that 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 humans and robots can do, but the storytelling, the heart of the game yeah. really has to have a, a human element to it. Absolutely. I think that's that's what we all crave, right? Like we we come to games a lot of the times, not all the time, but a lot of the times as an escape and as connection. And so if you're talking to a wall, you know, you're not going to get connection. <laughs> but if you're, you know, talking to, to a person, you, you get that connection. And I think it's the same for games. Like you're, you're really, you're going to feel when something is genuine versus when it's just written by AI. You know, like the end of every Final Fantasy 14 expansion where you're watching the credits roll with tears pouring down your face, that sort of thing. Yeah. Sobbing, no makeup, <laughs> because if so, just shirt would be covered. <laughs> every time. <laughs> Awesome. If you could recommend everyone on Earth play one game, which one would it be and why? Oh, I am going to lean back on Final Fantasy XIV for this <laughs> one yet again. Um, I think the accessibility of just the wider range of things you can do in the game just makes it so great for everyone. Um, you can have people that just log in to talk to people. You can have people that are very end game oriented and want puzzles and challenges and like literally everything in between. I've had people, I've seen people only craft, like maybe one character up to like <laughs> 15 and then, or one, one class up to 15 battle class. And then all of their crafting and gathering max. And I'm like, you go. <laughs> get whatever is good for you so i i really love that 14 has this community that's so diverse and how everyone plays the game and i i just absolutely love that wow no that is wonderful and you are right about these micro communities within 14 like have you ever che checked out like uh the home decorating websites or or the fishing yes. ones like there are very very dialed in communities in 14 very dialed in. I was part of like this huge group of people that kind of started on Instagram posting uh, G post screenshots. And so like there used to be a huge community there. And then when like people were going on Twitter and discord, like it just everyone went all over the place. So you have people that are focused on how to make as much kill as possible or how to make the best interactive houses as possible and just, you know, how to do the best nightclubs and RPing. And it's just, <laughs> there's so many micro communities and like, of course, everyone should play Final Fantasy. You're going to probably find something that you love and a bunch of other nerdy people that are in love with it too. <laughs> 
Right. And and sometimes you have to wonder, like, are we playing the same game? Like, you are clearly getting something very different out of it than I am sort of thing. Yeah, I think that with the the RP community, I am. <laughs> if you want to RP, that's you. It's just not my thing. And so, it's like, I have a, one of my best friends that I grew up with. She plays 14 and she's a big RPer. And she'll talk to me sometimes. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, that's that's not my login experience, but I'm glad you get to have it. <laughs> Well, no, it is, it is a fantastically immersive game. And uh, I, I hope we've all updated our little meme templates with the new Stormblood expansion included in the free trial for anyone who hasn't played. At this point, it's like we're going to have to get like a million different T-shirts because I know there were so, some people were selling them <laughs> with the, the Heaven's Word and now it's the Stormblood and, you know, oh, uh, love it. <laughs> Okay, um, that was the last question. Um, if anyone wanted to uh, see more of you, uh, where would you send them? I would send them first to YouTube and Twitter and Twitch. I stream about six plus times a week, <laughs> uh, mostly Final Fantasy XIV content. Sometimes you'll see me do uh, Overwatch or some other PvP style games. Um, Pyra underscore Sedania, you can find me just about anywhere. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. It was an absolute pleasure. Uh, and I hope to, you know, work with you again in the future. I am so excited for Dawn Trail and all the possibilities that it's going to bring to the community. So, Likewise. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this. This is a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for watching gamers and I will see you in game. Bye. Bye.